Hello. I decided to do a second video about South Korea because I named the first one something like South Korea 01. <laughs> so I think I should um, talk more. Today I was thinking about something funny. I think it was this morning. It feels like such a long time ago because I get up at about 4 a.m. Um, and now, what time is it? Uh, it's probably about yeah 20 to 7 p.m so um when i joined yeah when i went to south korea um i had this really lovely teacher supervising me at one of the schools i worked at two schools and uh actually she had a nickname i used to call her angel <laughs> because her name sounded like the word angel and she was really kind She's the one who I mentioned in one of my previous videos as well. Well, probably the one about South Korea. Um, so she took me to get a photo ID because I'd arrived as a foreigner. And then, um, <laughs> this, is this is probably so normal now, nowadays. Now we're in 2023, <laughs> coming up to 24. But this was a while ago, this happened in South Korea. So um, that's why this was significant. This was noticeable at the time. So um, I had my photograph taken for my ID and it was going to be used for the school, um, you know, like a lanyard probably and stuff like that as well. And then when I'd had, <laughs> I just had like a headshot then, the person, she was translating for me because I hadn't had a chance to study Korean before I came to Korea. So I only knew like a few greetings and things. I didn't know how to speak it yet. Well, I say yet, yeah, I still can't speak it. Um, then she was translating what this photographer was saying. Oh, he's asking if you want him to make your eyes a bit bigger. <laughs> so before they printed out the photograph, I was like, <laughs> pardon? <laughs> She's like, oh, he's asking if you want to make your eyes bigger on the photograph. I was like, no thanks. <laughs> Koreans have quite um, narrow eye shape, don't they? It's supposed to be like that, Koreans. You're supposed to be like that. You look good. It's perfect. You don't need to make the eyes bigger. Allah designed everybody perfectly. <sighs> then they coloured in. I, they didn't actually ask my permission for this part, but they col I had short sleeves on. You know, like kind of down to my elbow. <laughs> but the photographer coloured in the rest, so he must have got like a pen on the computer and just coloured it all in green to match the top. So it looked like I had long sleeves. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm sorry that the top... It, it mustn't have been, I don't know, conservative enough that I had these short sleeves. Um, so they coloured it in. <laughs> and then uh, they asked me something else. Do you want to make your eyes bigger? And do you want to what? Um, there was another adjustment that they offered to make to, to my face on the photograph. <laughs> it was for an ID. Literally for an ID. <laughs> so um, something my Korean friend told me. Not that one, my, uh, my lovely friend Suji. She said, Koreans are very overly focused on appearance. And it's really sad <sighs> to me. We have that pressure in our society as well. And we always have since we were, since I was young and I'm 40 now. I like to always drop that in. Um, there's a pressure to be not over a certain weight, so for women, they should appear to be very slim. And there's a problem really with plastic surgery in South Korea. I don't know the status of this now because I was there. How long ago was this? Um, probably about, f let's think, 14, 14 or 15 years ago. Yeah, maybe a bit longer. Um, it was already an issue at the time that people felt pressurised to change their body shape um, by having surgery. And just for cosmetic reasons, it's really heartbreaking to me. It's one of the issues that makes my heart really feel like it's breaking whenever I think about it. I 100% understand why somebody would want to have surgery to change their body shape. I 100% understand why somebody 
would get to the point where they think that is the answer and that's what they are going to do and that they go through with it. I think it's really heartbreaking that our society and some of our cultures cause us to have those ideas and and then to have those options. It's really, really difficult for me to um, even think about it. It makes me want to cry just thinking about somebody changing their body or something on their face with surgery when it's not hurting, it's not diseased. They feel like they should change it to become lovable, to become loved. <sighs> if your country is going in that direction, then just be really aware of that. It's not a positive thing that these things are offered. It's really, really um, an awful thing. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about South Korea, but I've gone into this kind of tangent in my head where I wanna talk about body shaming and like pressure to be a certain shape and to appear a certain way. Um, so I might have to do another video about that. Let's see if I can think of something else about South Korea. I was think I was actually thinking about it with amusement. Okay, let me just talk about something different to do with South Korea, which happened while I was there, to make it a bit lighter for your video. Um, you know what used to happen, right? If I ever went into a coffee shop, <laughs> the staff used to run away. <laughs> and I don't think it was just me. Because Koreans, um, at that point in time, they weren't very confident in general about speaking English with people. And I was in Jeju. It's a tourist destination. So they probably had more mm, like non-Korean people coming in. Nevertheless, if I came into a coffee shop, it did happen to me sometimes. It happened to me once that I went up to the um, counter to order some kind of drink from the coffee shop. And there was nobody there because they'd all gone to hide. They were like physically hiding because they didn't want to try to speak English and then say something wrong and um, humiliate themselves. And I was really upset because I felt like I couldn't have that connection with people. And I don't really mind if they can say something in English or not. And it's my fault. Like I felt like this is my fault because I should be able to speak in Korean. And maybe I was going to try and order in Korean. Korean. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I definitely have a lot of fondness for Koreans and I understand why they have that kind of, or they used to have that embarrassment about trying to speak English in front of their peers and what if they couldn't pronounce it properly, it's so different, it sounds very different, the language, to ours. And another thing that I just thought of with Korea, oh, it came into my head and then it went out. Um, oh no, I've forgotten it, by the way, you know, if you haven't seen my videos before, I have memory issues with my dyspraxia. So um, if if I have an idea, I'm trying to grasp it quickly before it goes away. It'll probably come back after. Um, so South Korea, Jeju, and uh, that was a really fun place. Let me just talk about the sea because it's nice to talk about the sea. Um, it's an island, it's a small island. You know, when you think of an island, you kind of imagine that you're near the sea. Well, I do. <laughs> but I wasn't actually that near the sea. Because when I'd been there for a little short while, a few days, I thought, oh, I know, I really want to go to the sea. I'll just get a taxi because there's so many taxis everywhere. So I just hailed a taxi and just got in and I like, asked them to go to the sea. And I was in that taxi for about 40 minutes or something to get to the seaside. I didn't realise it was that far away. However, it was extremely cheap because luckily the taxis are uh, very reasonably priced. Um, so I paid <laughs> and then I got out. And the sea, that wasn't the only time I went actually. Um, now I'm mixing up two separate visits to the sea. But the thing I wanted to say was that the waves are so powerful. So I remember that from the second time I went. And I went to like the south, co south coast part of Jeju um, with a couple of other people that I knew that time we tried to like I tried to paddle and the waves you wouldn't find this in England so I didn't understand it was going to be like that you couldn't even stand in the shallow water because it would push you because <laughs> it was so powerful it was a really surprising and exciting experience and a bit scary you know so um, and it was very very beautiful it's a lovely and welcoming place. And let me just quickly give a shout out to Sambang Sang, if anyone's <laughs> um, from Jeju. That's my favorite site. All right, thank you. Assalamu alaikum.